What's up, Christ Center Mental Health Community? This is me, David Leach, who Sarche. This is welcome to our weekly episode of Christian Schizo Rants, where it's two Christians ranting about different topics. Um, before we get started on this video, I have an announcement for those of you that are new to the channel. Please check out the Christ Center Mental Health Ministry website. It's www.christcenteredmentalhealth.net. Um, link is in the description. And there you can have access to the On Faith and Mental Health blog. You can see our statement of faith. You can check out the Christ Center Mental Health Ministry bookstore. You can um, find out how to contact me or someone on the ministry team for 24-hour peer support. Or you can find out how to support the ministry via Patreon, Venmo, or Cash App. Uh, as, as I said, this is our Christian Schizo Rants. How are you doing, Joseph McDermott? I'm doing very well. That's good. Uh, before we get into my topics, are there any topics you want to talk about? Um, well, uh, I just want to let everybody know that uh, I reconciled with my mother recently, and uh, so uh, like um, we're doing we're doing very well, and I'm glad that she's back into my life. You know, despite her her problems, you know, she she uh, she is a very moral woman. She doesn't uh, sleep around or, or uh, like do drugs or anything like that. I never had to worry about stuff like that with her growing up in the past. So this, uh, so I have her back in my life, and hopefully everything goes, you know, fairly smooth from this point on. And I'll try my best to, you know, make things uh, go better as well. Well, praise the Lord that you were able to reconcile with your mother. Like that's that's always good that that can happen like that. Amen. Like, like it's definitely. It's definitely like being able to reconcile with your parents. That's one of the most important relationships you can have. Amen. Yeah. Maybe it's the you know, Ten Commandments, you know. Yep. Honor, that mother. honor your father and mother. Yeah. Sometimes it's impossible to honor your father and mother by keeping them in your life. But in your case, you were able to bring your mom back into your life. So that's good. That's You should praise God for that. Amen. I have. Yeah. I uh, so for the first topic, I want us to just talk about, I do want to make a disclaimer. This could be a triggering topic for some people, but we're going to talk a little bit about suicide. That specifically, can a Christian com commit suicide and still be saved? Because there's a lot of misconceptions about this topic. A lot of people have been more influenced by Roman Catholic beliefs than um, then they've been influenced by the Bible. There's actually nothing in the Bible that says suicide is an unforgivable sin. Like the Roman Catholics, they have elevated suicide and called it a mortal sin, but that's not biblical. And I wanted to share with you a scripture for Romans 8 37 to 39. It says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as you can see, even right there, it says that neither death, like and that, and that, it's a general statement that that term death encompasses all death. So whether it's a natural death or suicide, it, it cannot separate you from the love of God that's found in Christ. So Amen. like a Christian, like I, I've seen a lot of harm done in the name of Christ when a believer has a family member that has committed suicide. I've seen Christians will turn around and say, oh, that family member is burning in hell now. He lost his salvation. First off, if you truly believe that God has predestined all things that come to pass, then you got to believe that he's even predestined how we're going to die, too. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm under the belief of uh, once saved, always saved. And, uh, yeah. you know, just because you believe in Jesus Christ doesn't mean you're going to have a smooth life after after that word. After Actually, the Bible says we have to cross the bear once we sign up for this for real so but you know if uh you get to the point where you feel like you have to take your life now i don't want to encourage this is a tricky thing like you don't want to encourage suicide but uh 
you're, I, I don't believe you go to hell if you're saved, uh, even if you do take your own life, you know, like, uh, uh, but, you know, I don't want to encourage suicide or anything like that. I always think there's a way out and you shouldn't want to, you, there, there's always a way out, you know, you, like, uh, yeah, on that, on that note, like, yeah, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to encourage any Christian out there to commit suicide. Like we do have a purpose for being on this earth, and you just like, like you just reminded me. I want to bring up this scripture from First Peter two nine. It says, "But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for His own possession." Now listen to this. That you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So yeah. as you can see, when God saved you in Christ, he made you his own possession. You are now royal and you're holy in his sight. And, and, well, and the purpose behind that is so that you can go out there and tell people about the excellencies of God, tell people the gospel, tell people how they can be saved. That's our purpose on this earth is to tell people the gospel and tell them that they have a new king and that they need to submit to. Amen. I absolutely 100% agree. Yeah. So, like, you may feel like you have no purpose in this life. Like, if you're feeling depressed and you may think that there's no purpose to life, but there is a purpose. You, you just need to look outside of yourself and look to Christ, and Christ will reveal your purpose to you. Like I remember when I was younger I, 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 and I was going through depression, I felt like my life was purposeless. And like I, I, I have attempted to take my life on many different occasions because I thought my life had no meaning. Like I thought that – that life was just, I, 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 I just thought that I should just kill myself. And I tried overdosing on medication. I tried to hang myself. I, I even resorted to cutting. And, like, and the reason why I did that was because I felt like life had no meaning or purpose to it. And, like, thankfully, those suicide attempts didn't didn't work out because like because it wasn't God's time for me to go because He obviously still had a purpose for me. And now, like, I, I'm in I'm in my thirties now, and I'm married. I have a full time ministry, and like it all worked. Like like it says in Romans eight twenty eight, all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. Amen. All things work together for the good of those who love God. That's not saying all things are good. It's saying that all things, whether good or bad, are working together for your good if you love God. Amen. Like, Amen. So I, I firmly believe that every single action that happens on this planet or in this creation is happening for the good of believers. So, like, like, like everything, everything that happens, we may not understand how it's working for the good of believers, but somehow, some way, it is working for the good of believers. Everything that happens in this creation is happening for the good of believers. And we'll have a uh, uh, eternity to relax and have fun and, uh, and enjoy um, uh, Jesus Christ. But for now, uh, we have to we have to work hard and, and try to get people the gospel. And uh, get people, um, you know, a, a way out of this uh, predicament called life, you know, because yeah. it's not so easy, is it? So, exactly. Like, like I know, like if you if you are someone who's struggling with suicide, like don't like, like don't be afraid to reach out for help. Like, reach out to a trusted member. That's Even us. Like a, reach out to a trusted loved one. Reach out to you can reach out to us. We have a twenty four hour peer support. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to a mental health professional or a counselor. Don't whatever, but whatever you do, don't follow through. Don't listen to the lie from the devil that your life is worthless and you should kill yourself because it's not. Your your life is worth something. And God ha does have a purpose for your life. Amen. Yeah. All right. So, is there any anything else you want to say on that topic? Nope. All right. We'll go ahead and get into the videos then. Oh, this first video, I like. 
It's about this TikTok prophet. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. Oh. A little while back, I made the mistake of using my real Instagram yeah. and TikTok accounts to look. Are for you Christian familiar with this guy, genetically modified skeptic? I've seen that name a few times, so I'm not too aware of this guy. Uh, he's a YouTube atheist. He's actually, he's actually real. He's actually, he seems like one of the nice atheists on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Christian content to react to on my wife's channel. That's when I found a clip of a guy no older than about 25 prophesying to his church group and hundreds of thousands of followers. First off, like the thing is, any like I, I want to put this out there right now. After the time of the last when the last apostle died, there has never been any more prophets or apostles today. Like, like I want to take you guys to he, um, the book of Hebrews real quick. Like Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. It says, long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things through whom also he created the world. So as you can see, back before Christ, God spoke to us through prophets. But nowadays, there is like nowadays God speaks to us in his son. There is no need there, like the canon is closed. There, there's no need for prophets to give new revelation. Like, so anytime you see someone claiming to be a prophet, they're a false prophet. Or if they claim Correct. to be a prophet. If they claim to be an apostle, they're a false apostle. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the, the point of a prophet, a biblical prophet anyways, was to point to the Messiah, am I right? Yeah, they were supposed to express the oracles of God and pronounce God's judgment on nations. And yeah, ultimately to point us to the Messiah. When the Messiah yeah, is so here. The Messiah is here. So yes. uh so who does uh, John Joseph Smith and even Muhammad think they are really like? Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, there's exactly. no there's no prophets after the Messiah. He was already here, so exactly. All right, now watch this. It ramps up. This made what? Me, shook Japan oh out. So basically, this guy's saying he was he he was probably he prophesied this earthquake that shook Japan hours after his prophecy. Like, okay. yeah, like that. That's such a that's such a coincidence. Like you can't like earthquakes happen in Japan and around the world all the time. So to say you prophesied an earthquake. Like well, yeah, yeah. anybody can anybody can do that. I can say there's gonna be a prophecy. There's gonna be I, I can say there's gonna be an earthquake in Haiti. I don't like leave it at that. And when an earthquake in Haiti happens, I can say, see, I prophesied that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, oh, hey, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. And you know what? Something disastrous is gonna happen soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hours after this word. Yeah. Uh, Ever since then, algorithms have bombarded me with content from Gabriel Storm, the charismatic Christian prophet. Since my last video was charismatic so Christian prophet. <laughs> wow. He's a crazy, Serious, I thought we could take a break and do something fun, like talk about a guy who thinks queer people are demonic and that the world is about to end. Oh. It's beginning to look a lot like Jesus is coming back soon. Oh God. Okay. My man, the pronoun they is both gender neutral, singular and plural. The demons that Jesus casts out in Mark chapter five refer to themselves as we because there are multiple demons. People have been using they as a singular pronoun for centuries and it's had no more to do with demons than See, this. Uh, I, I've never heard, I don't know what he's talking about with that. I've never heard 
anybody referring to themselves as a they until very recently. Yeah. I don't know where he's getting this, that they've been saying that for centuries. No, they, the, we, they and them has always implied multiple people, whether it's yeah. – it has nothing to do unless, with gender. Unless he's talking about like back in – um medieval times when kings and queens would say us as referring to them in a singular sense like they would say our or we yeah. but i don't know that like that was back in medieval times but it's uh, never it's uh, never been meant for a singular person that didn't want to identify as a male or a female that's a recent thing well the mid the kings that would say us or our they were meaning it in a singular sense Oh, okay, whatever. Yeah. But like, like other than kings and queens that would say that back then, I can't think of any other regular person that would talk like that. So I don't know what he's getting that this has been going on well, for centuries. You know what? Th these these uh these people think so highly of themselves. They're acting like kings and queens. You know? Yeah, like, that's um, true. That's true. Yeah. When you use it. Oh God, oh no, Gabriel used they in a video? The demons are taking over Christian TikTok. Jesus is coming back any second, guys. Also, don't you want Jesus to come back? Like, isn't this a good thing for you? You should be thanking every non-binary buddy you come across. I mean, they're just getting you into your mansion in heaven faster, right? Speaking of non-binary buddies, all right, I've got one question for you guys. I need a non-binary perspective. Um, is Legion, a good non-binary name? Oh my god. Yes. I can see that working pretty well. In fact, if I had known I was non-binary when I was picking my new name, I totally would have gone with that. Yeah, yeah, naturally, right? Oh, yeah. Man. I wanted a name that had the same first initial as my original name. This, this LGBT pronoun shit is a cult. I'm sorry, but... Yeah, it is a cult. But they want to like now they want to like hijack the word legion and make it a non-binary term. Yeah. Like, what a surprise. Yeah, I know. Mm. So legion would not have worked for me, but dang, I wish it did. Like in another life, yeah. Yeah. Legion LaBianca is a little bit of a mouthful. That's badass. It's, Are you kidding? I, I'm gonna call you that. I like bad that a lot, ass. actually. <laughs> what? They're acting like this is a. They're acting like this. 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 To me, this is like fairyland stuff. There's nothing masculine about this at all. Yeah, no. Stop this know. marshmallow crap. And this is not badass. Are you kidding yeah. me? What the fuck is they're, she they're, doing? they're making them. They're making a mockery. They're making a mockery. Yeah. I know. Like, like the like the the way I see it, they can laugh about it all they want. Like in the end, we'll see who has the last laugh. Yeah, I pray that they find Jesus Christ someday, but they need to repent of this foolishness immediately. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just this is okay, maybe that doesn't actually up. help our case, but I just I had to have them weigh in. Look at what Cocomelon, the world's biggest children's show, is teaching your kids. We know about you. You learn to get up and dance. Oh my god, Cocomelon is terrible. They actually have a cartoon. <laughs> they have a cartoon where a kid has two dads. I guess so. That yeah. is disgust. Cocomelon? I never heard of that. I've heard of Cocomelon. Yeah, have I. Oh, come on, huh? Telling kids that there are happy families with two dads, guys. We can't tell children the truth. Think about all the things you. Well, actually, I actually I've seen I've seen videos of people that grew up with with two dads or two moms in the household, and they they actually talk about how horrible it was, a horrible yeah. experience. What about that Smoke. scandal about those two dads that uh, did those uh, that took pictures and are in jail for you know what to their kids? You yeah, know, that's so, true. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, little, is that the truth or not, uh, Mister uh, Skeptic? Whatever. Genetically modified. Yeah. Just call him Drew. Drew. Okay. Yeah. Drew. Like to do, just be you. Just be me. Maybe they're telling kids to be happy being their true selves because there are millions of people who tell queer people they're an abomination just for existing. 
you kind of brought this one on yourself, Gabriel. I mean, there's no way this video of yours would have gotten 15 million views if it didn't have an interracial gay couple in it for people to shit their pants over. Coco Melon isn't commanding kids to embrace lascivious hedonism. It's yeah. just saying it's okay to be yourself, man. Relax. No, the they're not being the themselves. The for two when they watch Coco Melon at a young age, age they think that they... crap is okay, and then they grow up to thinking it's okay that's... later on. But, you know, if they didn't see that at an early age, they wouldn't even know it existed, this homosexuality. Yeah, it's, stuff. It's, all we're, part we're of their it's, it's all part of their agenda to normalize exactly. gay marriage. Yeah, and then this 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 modified Drew skeptic asshole justifies it. Well, watch the language. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, they want to, they wanna like, normalize gay marriage. So they start off by brainwashing our children. Yeah. <sighs> generation to watch and listen to it's about being like jesus comment be like jesus god bless you yeah i agree we should pay attention to what our kids are watching because actual scientific research shows that exposure to homophobic and transphobic behavior kind of like yours damages the mental health of queer people it's about not being paranoid about other well people's there is people. there is a truth like if like you bombard gay people with negative negative views about homosexuality it can affect their mental health but if you just like like i want to know how he's defining negative views on home it's like simply saying homosexuality is sin are, are is he gonna say that's a that's a negative view because if that's if that's if that's what he's gonna say then basically anything can be a negative view like any, anything anything you say that i don't like can be considered a negative view and you know he has a uh, pretty negative views on christianity how would he like it if he got censored and not allowed to be talked about that you know like what what, what, yeah. what the studies of, of christians committing suicide because of guys like this you know you wouldn't have yeah, a job exactly. exactly like like yeah like i Shit, like, is the suicide rate amongst homosexuals a, a, a really high up there? Yes. But I think the suicide rate is high up there because they know that they're living wrongly. They know that they're not living to the right to the right standard that they should be living, and they're, feel, they're feeling the guilt of their depravity. Yep. Behavior and being a sane human being. Comment, be a sane human being. Rima's concert, demonic. Rima's latest concert had many people frightened, scared to death, and disturbed by the demonic energy at the show. I'm sorry, but if you're talking seriously about invisible monsters and using that music all the stupid AI-generated conspiracy TikToks are using... Scientists just found a dragon frozen in ice. Your credibility is in the toilet. There was so much uproar, even BBC News did a story on it. Others were not sure, with some even calling the show demonic. It's clear to see that people are becoming more aware of the spiritual realm. People are beginning to see it's not just a show, it's not just for the shock factor, they're actually doing rituals and devil worship. I mean, you're talking about the show, aren't you? Every time an artist has occult themes in a show, they get tons of free publicity from gullible or paranoid people online. So, I do uh, see his point there. Like, like I, I, I kind of think that like the, a lot of these artists, they know that if they put like a an occult symbol on their album or in their show, there's going to be some gullible Christians out there that are going to give them free publicity. Yeah, that's just how it works. Like, I, I kind of think that a lot of these artists – they do it on purpose to get to pull at these gullible Christians and pull at their heartstrings just so these gullible Christians will give them free publicity so that people will go check out their show. Like I don't necessarily think that all these artists are, wor are actually worshiping the devil. I think they know that by showing occult symbols, they can get free publicity from gullible Christians. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't know who this. What what is the artist was they talking about? Anyways, uh, I don't know. I think her name was Rima or something like that. Rima, huh? Oh, Rihanna or something. No, Rima. Rima. 
I don't know. Yeah, I don't know who that. I don't know who that I, is. I would, I would have to. I would have to do some research on her to know if she what she believes or whatever. But who yeah. knows? I really don't care because I don't keep up with pop culture. Doesn't, yeah, neither doesn't, do I. Doesn't really like uh, uh, bother me yeah. one way or the other. What people do regarding that, you know? Yeah. I think artists might have motives other than worshiping the devil. Also, if you'd actually watched that BBC story and learned something about Rema, you'd know that this supposedly demonic mask he wore was likely just a historical reference. Which actually seems to be a reference to Edia, who was the first queen's mother of the 16th century Benin Empire. Rema is from Benin City in Nigeria, and many say he's paying homage to his roots. As some of you know by now, I'm a big fan of Afrobeat, and I can tell you that Christians have been calling Afrobeat artists demonic since Fela Kuti invented the genre in the 1970s. Nigeria was heavily colonized by Britain in the 19th and 20th centuries, which meant colonizers imposed Christian ideology and customs on the people, telling them that their I do, I do see, like, I, I have noticed, like, a lot of, like, in, like, like white, like white suburban Christianity, they do have a t t like a habit of like de like de denigrating music genres that aren't like how should I say this? Like like white Christians, like they for the longest time they would like denigrate Christian rap music or like like. Like they, like they just, I don't know how to say it. Like, like they, like a lot of white Christians tend to like talk, talk down about, talk down against different cultures that don't match their own. Well, um, I know in the nineties when, um, uh, Snoop Dogg and, uh, Dr. Dre and somewhat to a certain extent Eminem were doing their thing. A lot of parents that I, I was a teenager at the time and like younger a little bit, but when this was going on, but they would get the CDs and stomp on them. And, and really it just made kids like me more intrigued by this stuff. And it made us want wow. to listen to it even more, you know, so That's it's really kind of, kind of, I just, it's an exercise of futility. It really does, really does yeah. no. Well, my point no in bringing uh, my, point, my, like. my point in saying that is, I can I can see how, like, because he said that Christians for long, have for the longest time have been calling what he call it Afrobeat. They've been calling Afrobeat demonic for centuries. I can see white Christians saying that about Afrobeat, like, because it because like to them it seems foreign and therefore. They think it's not it's not Christian. Okay. Yeah. I never heard of Afrobeat. Neither have I, really, to be honest. But. Spiritual traditions were evil and demonic. After all, it's a lot easier to control a huge number of people if you separate them from their roots and common identity so they can't easily band together and overthrow you. Afrobeat was created as a protest against latent colonial power in West Africa and has always celebrated traditional Yoruba, Ashanti, Igbo, and other spiritualities. Naturally, Christians have historically responded with the kind of spiritual racism that Gabriel ignorantly displayed in his video. I think you might want to listen to Rema here, buddy, and calm down. Unfortunately, Gabriel has a serious fixation on demons. He thinks they're involved with pretty much everything. Spirit of depression, come forth. Yes, master. I have an assignment for you. There's a child of God. This uh, spirit of depression, like, I'm so sick and tired of Christians calling depression a spirit or calling any kind of mental disorder a spirit. I... To any Christian out there that thinks a mental illness is a spirit, I have one question for you. If mental illness is a spirit, then why do medication work so well at, at um, restoring the chemical imbalances in your brain and making you stable? Like you would think a physical pill could not harm a spiritual entity. Yeah, because, you know, Physical, uh, mental illness is just as real as physical illness. And uh, even though there's not a cure or right away cure for a broken leg, 
there's stuff to heal a broken leg and then, you know, so, and there's stuff to heal mental illness and I got to live with this for the rest of my life, but I do need meds to function. I just, yeah, to exactly. I was trying to destroy my kingdom. I want you to go and attack him. <laughs> Easy. I honestly feel bad for the guy. If he actually thinks depression is like an invisible dude who visits you to mess up your life, not an actual medical condition. Okay, let me see if I've got this right. So when you're a kid, you get visits from Santa, the Tooth Fairy, and the Easter Bunny. And when you grow up, you get your first corporate job, you have a 40 minute commute every morning, and realize that every aspect of the human experience has been commodified so that both your labor and recreation funnels wealth to an elite class of sociopaths whose greed will never be satiated. Then you get a visit from the spirit of depression. <laughs> what happened to you? I don't know what happened. Uh, he, he just started praying and they canceled your assignment. And then he started pleading the blood in the name of G G G G. Don't you ever say that name or talk about the blood. What's going on? Oh, oh no. This is, this is so crazy. I, I've experienced a depression after I got saved. And, you know, just because I mentioned the word Jesus Christ isn't going to snap me out of it, or like some uh, earthquake is going to happen, or well, I agree, know, but this is this is so corny. Like, like, yeah, like, honestly, like he's trying to make a skit about demons. Like, I, like this is the most. This is the cheesiest stuff I've you ever know, this, seen. This is this is one of the reasons why I don't even go on TikTok. You know, yeah, it's, no. it's, the crap on it is just outrageous. It's like, this yeah. Is so Exactly. Again, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of depression, go right now. Oh, I can't take it. Just because, like you said, just because you mentioned Jesus, that Jesus's name is not a not a magical like cure. It's not. But just mentioning Jesus's name will not make your depression go away. Definitely not like, going to make an earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> Like you should, if you if you do have clinical depression, you need antidepressants, and there's nothing wrong in the, with admitting that you need medication to treat your mental illness. Like you said, like you need your medication to function. I need my medication to function. Like if I didn't have my medication, I'd probably either be dead or in prison right now. Exactly. Me too. Yeah. And like the thing is, that's not taking medication is not a lack of trust in God. I actually trust God to provide me with the medication that I need for my stable mental health. Yep, I'm getting plenty of mine so far. Yeah. Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop indeed. You know how in elementary school science class, the teacher would explain physical things in terms you could understand, like a magnet that's positively charged wants to stick to something negatively charged, so it attracts that. And it doesn't want to stick to something positively charged, so it repels that. We all know that the magnet doesn't actually want anything, right? It's just easier for people to understand phenomena like this when you explain it in anthropomorphic terms. I think Gabriel's theory of mental illness is appealing to a lot of people because it, one, consists of a simple story of literal anthropomorphic good guys and bad guys, which is easy to grasp, and two, suggests an easy solution of literally just saying magic words. But this is not how depression actually works. Let me see if I can explain how it does in Gabriel's style. Neurotransmitters, come forth. Yes, yes master. master. I have an assignment for you. <laughs> the centers of the brain involved in mood regulation are working too efficiently. Go forth and make them work inefficiently. <laughs> Easy. So, did you do it? Nah. Wait, w why not? Well, he started exercising regularly and, you know, going to therapy. Shh! Don't you ever say that word or talk about going to therapy. What's going on? Okay, I'm glad the changes you've made are helping. Your homework for this week is to keep implementing the CBT stuff we went over. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Honestly, I think his, I think Drew's version is a lot better than that so-called prophet's narrative. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. At least at least Drew's version narrative is actually realistic. It was satire, but it was just making fun of that other video, which was complete asinine. Yeah. You can do that. 
Okay, yeah, admittedly, that's still not as theatrical as Gabriel's theory. This is my daughter, Aya. Uh, she said to me, why we have to move? But you get the point. Gabriel's theory of depression is just a story. It's not a legitimate explanation with scientific evidence behind it. Misinformation about mental illness is dangerous, and we should call people out for spreading it, even if it's a part of their religious beliefs. On that note... Bro, I don't get why I struggle so much with anxiety. Like, I pray all the time, but like, even when I pray, I have like these crazy thoughts in my head. I don't know what to do. I think you need some deliverance. Wait, are you trying to say I have a demon? I'm a Christian and Christians can't have demons. It says so in the Bible. Now, where in the Bible does it say that Christians can't have demons? Or yeah, I, I hate this. The Bible does say that where the Holy Spirit dwells, a the like it says the holy spirit and the and a demon cannot dwell in the same place at the same time mm -hmm. so like and the thing is i hate when people bring up mental illness and then someone says oh you need deliverance Crit mental illness is not demonic like it's yeah. not like like i said if mental illness was demonic then medication should have no effect on mental illness right I agree. This is not that we were born this way. We have to live with this. And this is not something. This is not. This is not spiritual. This is. This is. Yeah. This. I, I feel like I don't know if you, if you notice this, but I think Christians tend to over spiritualize things that don't need to be spiritualized. Yeah, that's true. Like uh, whatever the subject is, you can take any subject and spiritualize it. And that's not really uh an antidote for uh sanity really like you, you can't spiritualize everything that's 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 not there, there's a physical realm and a spiritual realm for a reason and yeah. you don't have to, you don't have to spiritualize every single subject in your life exactly or maybe your brain is involved here somehow you know the organ that produces your thoughts and feelings Maybe it is producing those anxious thoughts and not an interdimensional spirit creature who just really likes to whisper that you're a disappointment to your parents because you haven't bought a house for three nickels and a handshake like they did when they were your age. Christians can have a demon by opening up doors and giving legal right to the enemy. Open doors, legal right, what is that? When you commit a sin or do something... What does it say in the Bible that Christians can be possessed by a demon because they opened the door and allowed the demon to take them over? I, I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. Like, actually, like, 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 the Bible is clear. Christians cannot be possessed by the devil. We could be yeah. oppressed. We could be oppressed by the devil, but we can't be possessed by the devil. Right. You're not supposed to. You open up a door to the demonic. Just like if you went and watched pornography, you're opening up the door to perversion and lust. And by opening up that door, you're allowing a demonic spirit to live in you. Honestly, this is just disgusting. But, like, seriously, like, if Christian, like, I can, I remember when I was young in the faith, and I believe this nonsense. Like I, I thought there was a spirit like ready to pounce on me every corner that I turned because and like that like the level of paranoia that I felt actually I started think I, I I remember I read a book when I was young in the faith called This Present Darkness by Frank Peretti. I never finished the book, but like like in that in that book he portrays Things such as anger, depression, lust. He, he portrays things like that as demons that are ready to pounce on you at any time. And I remember when I read that book, it made me increasingly paranoid. I thought there was a devil ready to pounce on me every time I turned the corner. Yeah, I know. I um, I went through similar – when I was a baby Christian, I went through similar episodes where – like, you know, every time I, I, I made a mistake, you know, uh, I, I kind of like thought I was going to go to hell anyways. And like, you know, I thought I had to beg for forgiveness every t every single time and I would screw up again and have to ask for forgiveness again. And it was like a constant cycle of paranoia and like thinking I was going to lose any sleep, thinking I was going to go to hell anyways. Yeah, I can understand. That. I actually had an experience like that, too, where I felt like like every like. I would make up sins in my mind that I thought I committed. And I like constantly be walking around scratching my chest asking for 
God to forgive me every two minutes. I'd be mumbling to myself, asking God to forgive me every two minutes. And then, like, and then if I was told someone a story and I asked if I forgot a detail, I'd rush to the bathroom and beg God for forgiveness. And then I'd go to the person and tell them, and tell them, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm asking for your forgiveness because I lied by omission when I told you this. And, like, people would look at me and be like, Calm down, like you're, you're like, like it was. I I was I had such a weak conscience back then. Yeah, yeah, me too. But that's the kind of the growing pains you go through as a baby Christian. But uh, once yeah. you actually start to study the Bible more, hear uh, sound sermons from a good pastor and whatnot, then you start to realize that you're in error and you can yep. live free in Christ. That's true. Exactly. Thing. This is so transparently a fear tactic to get people to fall in line with your religion. People in all cultures across time have made up stories about monsters in order to get children to behave or stay out of dangerous situations. That doesn't mean the monsters are real. It means that scary stories are pretty effective tools for controlling people. Gabriel's story is far worse than one meant to keep kids from going into the woods alone at night, though. His story says that mental health problems are your own fault. You caused them because you dared to be. That's true. Like he is essentially blaming people with mental illness, saying it's our fault that we're mentally ill. Like when, like when he says, "Oh, you opened the door to sin that brought the spirit into your life." He's blaming us, saying it's we're at fault for our schizoaffective disorder. It's our fault. That's that's actually the same mistake that that Jesus' disciples made in John chapter nine, when the disciple they came across a man born blind, and they asked Jesus, "Who sinned, this man or his parents?" So they were already assuming that either that that man, they they were already assuming that that man that was born blind. They were assuming that either he sinned or his parents sinned, and the result was that they, that he was punished with blindness. But Jesus responded and said, "Neither this parent, neither him nor his parents sinned, but he was born blind in order to display the glory of God." And Amen. I believe in the same way, mental illness glorifies God. Like, like we may not, we may not be magically healed of our mental illness in this life, but our mental illness does display the glory of God in its own way. Now, don't get me wrong; it is a burden to have schizoaffective disorder, well, as well as um, atten attention deficit disorder. But you know, there's always pros and cons to everything, in my opinion. So. There's uh, benefits to bipolar, there's benefits to schizophrenia, believe it or not, and there's benefits to ADD, and like, you know, I'm glad God made me this way, because if he didn't, I might be an atheist, I might be unsaved, who knows where I would be right now if I had a, a normal, healthy mind, but the yeah. way my life went is a testimony to my to my faith, and um. If it wasn't for my mental disorders, I wouldn't be in the situations I was to get saved. Yeah, no, I understand. I, I feel the same way about myself. Yeah. One time. You're weak, you're broken, and you invited supremely evil monsters to inhabit your body. The only cure is for you to beg for forgiveness. You having a demon doesn't mean you're not saved. It means you're oppressed. I've had deliverance many times. Wait, you had deliverance? I sure have, and Jesus set me free so I could get it too. Hey, let's go pray and get those demons out in Jesus' name. Let's go kick those demons out. The only thing that needs to get out is you for gaslighting people. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done that. If you have anxiety, blaming yourself for it and then ritualistically begging God's forgiveness to have demons expelled is not going to solve the problem. You'll still have anxiety because you didn't address the root of the problem. Actually, I think when you think everything's all spiritual... And like we're in a constant like we're, we have to constantly be worried about evil spirits like affecting our mental health. Like I think that actually causes you to, to become more anxious because I know with me, after I became reformed and I started to realize that my mental illness isn't spiritual, like I, I my anxiety has gone down way like significantly less. Like I don't feel that much anxiety around my around things anymore like 
I'm actually at more at peace. Yeah, amen. That's good. Could be many different things, things in your life, just a chemical imbalance, who knows? Repeatedly going through the cycle of gaslighting and then getting delivered is likely to make the issue worse. If you listen to one thing in this video, let it be this. Seek professional medical help, please. Praying and going to church can be helpful if you have a healthy community and it doesn't feed you dangerous misinformation, but don't substitute faith for medical care. You know, I, I agree with that. Like, if you are suffering with a mental illness, then seek professional help. See a therapist, see a psychiatrist, get on medications. Like, faith should not be a replacement for medications and um, therapy. Like, like, your faith in Christ, like, you can have faith in Christ and still see a therapist and a psychiatrist. You can yeah, trust they can go God. hand in hand. Yeah, they can go hand in hand. You know, it's not an either or. So, mm -hmm. and going to church, going to church is important. Being around a, a body of believers who care for you, who who support you, that'll go a long way with building up your your health, your self esteem, and your mental health too. So, like, but don't think to yourself, "Oh, I have the church and I have faith in Jesus." So therefore, I don't have to take medication or see a, or see a therapist. Like, don't fall into that trap. Like, we live right. in a fallen world, and that means things like we live. We have fallen human bodies, which means our bodies are subject to decay. Which means our brains are subject to decay, and that means we can. So in this life, we will have mental illnesses and physical illnesses. And God has given us doctors and mental health professionals for our benefit. Yep, that's true. And um, all good things come from God. And uh, your medication is a good thing, especially if it helps out with uh, with things that um, you know the psychiatrist figured out as far as uh, mental illness goes. So exactly. Like Mark Zuckerberg are building underground doomsday bunkers. This is end times prophecy. The Bible says in Isaiah 219, and this is about the end times, people will flee to caves in the rocks and to holes in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he rises to shake the earth. We are seeing that very thing happen when these billionaires are literally fleeing to holes in the ground. They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars for underground bunkers and they're hiding from something. Regardless of how Mark Zuckerberg is doing it, I don't think him building a doomsday bunker has as much to do with Jesus coming back as it does with the fact that three of the world's biggest man-children have flexed their control of nuclear weapons in the last few years. People have been doomsday prepping for yeah, a long time. There's enough of that. Oh. Okay, uh, Jane Jane Icon says, "Why does it he? Why does it say he false prophets in the end times to test the prophet and use discernment?" Well, yeah, there there's there's false prophets these days, but there's no true bit. There's no true prophets nowadays because the last prophet, uh, the last apostle was John. And after the last apostle, there's never been a need for a new prophet to give new revelation or an apostle to give new revelation because the canon is closed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, um, let's, uh, let me look it up. She, she also, she quoted Acts 2. 217 she said it should come to pass in the last days saith god i'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams i like acts 217 that that scripture is that 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 scripture is actually referring to the day of pentecost when god when the holy spirit was poured out on the people at the day of pentecost like so, but yeah. Do you have anything more you want to say about that video before we go on to the next one? Well, I'm just going to look up the last verse in the Bible. Revelation 22, 21 says, 
The grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Amen. Yeah. I don't know. I said that. <laughs> so I don't know. I thought that might have said something about like uh, how there would be no more the cannons closed, but I apparently not. Maybe I had to go a little bit back. But well, it does say. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, you're on the right track. It says in verse 18, I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if Amen. anyone takes away from the words of the book of this, of this prophecy, God will take away his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. That's proof right there that the Book of Mormon is heresy. Yeah. Exactly. And actually yeah. that 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 scripture and then it, does, it appears again in Deuteronomy. So those two scriptures prove that the canon is closed. Amen. Yeah. All right. So the next video I want us to go over Have you heard of this guy named Dr. John Deloney? I can't say that I have. Uh, he's basically, I think, I, I'm not sure exactly where he got his doctorates, but he has he has this show um, where he gives people advice like this video. As you can see, the title is My Fiance's Bipolar Disorder Exhausts Me. What Can I Do? I, I watched this, <laughs> and I had some things, like I thought, like I wanted us to discuss it because he... I, I want to know what you what what you what you think of the advice he gives this person. Okay. Let's go to Chris in D Town, Dallas, Texas. What's up, Chris? Hey, Doctor John, how's it going? Partying, dude. What are you up to? Oh, nothing much. Thank you for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Absolutely, brother. What's up, man? How can I help? All right. So my question is, how can I best support my fiance? Um, with her uh, bipolar uh, diagnosis while also still taking care of myself and making sure that I'm good mentally. Mm. Um, so tell me little, about it. What's she backstory what, here? Yeah. What are y'all going through? I will so, say, I will say uh, coming from like, I can kind of relate to him on, a, on a, like, not really. I like, well, like, he's in a relationship with someone with bipolar disorder and my wife is in a, a relationship with someone with schizoaffective disorder, bipolar type. So, like, I honestly like, like, I, I like when you're, when I, I can imagine, like, because I know my mental illness causes a lot of strain on my wife, especially when I'm unstable. So, like, it's definitely I can imagine how. Someone that doesn't have mental illness, when they when they are dealing with someone in a relationship that they're serious about, and that person has mental, I can imagine how how that could be a hard thing for them to deal with. Yeah, um, especially before I got saved. You know, when I'm depressed, I'm not so much of a burden because I keep to myself and I'm just stuck in my room. But when I'm manicking, I am definitely a burden. And I haven't yes. had a major manic in about four years, and I want to plan it and keep it on that way. But I'm on a good med right now, so it shouldn't happen again, hopefully. But uh, yes. you know, uh, I definitely, uh, I definitely like the med I'm on now, and like, but uh, as far as um, me being a burden as with people, that was definitely the case, man. I was, I was being a, a, a major a hole, if you know what I mean. Like, I, I was, yes. I was totally. I thought I could take on the world, so to speak, you know, and like uh, yeah, exactly. a while you crash because, you know, you, you get ashamed of what all you've done during your manic. But uh, it, it's, yeah. it's 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 a it's definitely a roller coaster of a ride. I mean, it is. Course. Yeah. It all started last year. We've been together five years. So starting last year, um, we had pretty rough year. Um Started off, we lost my dad to cancer oh, um, sorry, back man. in February of last year. And then um, fast forward to May, she graduated college, you know, doing good, looking for jobs. And then she started getting just really, really depressed, like couldn't get out of bed. Um, she ended up 
going into a manic episode and ended up wanting to hurt herself. Um, we had to hospitalize her for 10 days and, you know, she's, they got her stabilized. She got out and for probably the next four or five months, she just had little episodes about every couple of weeks. Um, I ended up quitting my job to stay home with her, take care of her, make sure she, you know, didn't go out and do anything that was going to hurt her or anything like that. And I mean, that was really, really tough on me. Um, See, like, first off, like, I, I can, I can tell that this is bothering him. Like, 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 he, like, first off, like, I, my first thought is, is she taking her medication? Because, like, she might need a medication adjustment if she's still experiencing these symptoms. Yeah, yeah, that's probably, or she's not medicated at all. Yeah. And she thinks she's doing it without medication, but clearly there's something she needs, she needs help, you know. Exactly. A lot of things happen. We got into a lot of fights and you know a lot of things were said and it was just really really tough on me um a lot of things well, uh, you said a lot of stupid stuff or she said a lot of stupid stuff to you uh, it was a lot of mostly i mean it, that was the first time that i had dealt with that that was the first time i went through that with her now, hold on hold on and i want you to hear be i want you to pay close attention to your distancing language some tough mm -hmm. things were said that yes. absolves people from hurt. Either you hurt somebody and you mm -hmm. don't like who you became in those moments trying to take care of her, or you didn't know she was capable of saying some of that stuff and she hurt you. What was it? Uh, See, I don't like that he's having him focus on his distancing language. Like the guy is obviously t sharing his perspective. And I, I feel like focusing on his distancing language is not the right move to make. I think he's uh, trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. What his problem oh, is. Yeah, is but I feel like he's going down the, right, the wrong trail. Like, let the guy express himself. Right, right. I hear you. I mean, honestly, it was a lot of both of us. Um, we both said a lot of things and did a lot of things that, you know, hurt each other Damn. and um, you know, it's, for me, it was hard to kind of decipher, you know, whether that was actually her saying those things to me. And that, you know, like I said, that was the first time I went through that. And that was just, it's hard to hear a lot of those things. And so I reacted not in the best way to it. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, that was so, definitely on both of us. So are you back at work? Yeah, so I started a new job. Um, I ended up, you know, having a hard time finding a job. Um, you know, I was at home for almost four months after that, after she found a job and, you know, things went back to normal. Well, fast forward to about three weeks ago, um, she was in a new job for about two months. It was her dream job. She loved it. It, it was pretty abnormal hours. Um, and they kind of forced her out. They, the girl that was her boss just didn't really want her there and then kind of gave her the option to either leave or stay in a toxic work environment. So we talked about it. We thought oh, we, hold, kind of, hold, hold we made the decision. Hold on. I, I want to make sure we're on, we're, that we're using affirmative language, okay? And oh. it, I'll tell okay. you at the end why this is important. Switching to Shopify helps you sell smarter at every stage of your business. Create a custom store, find more shoppers, and get the best converting checkout on the planet. Whatever your stage, businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Switch today at shopify.com slash YouTube audio. In this current market, where it's very, very hard to find employees. Right. It's been my experience that people are reticent to just... Like, I don't like her. I'm just going to be mean to her and try to force her out. Mm -hmm. Or can you, with, like, clear, cleaning your glasses and looking objectively, 
Is there a chance that your fiance was a terrible employee? She didn't show up on time. She snapped at people. She had little miniature episodes at work and it was just too much. Yeah, I I see where he's going with this because, yeah, we, we do have a tendency to, like when it comes to our loved ones, we want to think that anytime they get in trouble, it's not their fault. They didn't cause it. Like it's always, we want, we want to have, we have a tendency to want to defend our loved ones. But what he's doing is asking this man to look at his wife's situation from realistic eyes and say, is it possible that she could have lost her job because she wasn't a good worker? Right. Like, and like I think we need that. Like, cause like, those of us with mental illness, we sometimes don't want to take the blame for when things bad go, when something bad happens. We want to blame it on our mental illness or we want to blame it on other people. But sometimes we, like, if we're honest, sometimes we cause our own problems. True. That's absolutely true. Um, I mean, I don't think she was a terrible employee. Uh, I think it was a learning curve for her. Okay. It's a, she was new to this industry and she was learning and she wanted to learn. Okay. And they kind of put her in a position that, you know, she either learned it on her own or, you know, it didn't work out. Okay. And I, I don't think it had anything to do with her being a bad employee. Um, but she, but she, so, clearly she wasn't able to get the job that they wanted done, done. Yes, um, or it couldn't I also get think it done. There were some in the way. unrealistic expectations out of her. Okay, and I'll, I'll say, I mean, yeah. Ultimately, here's the deal: you can't, um, as much as you want to, and you're a good guy, you can't fix her. Right. Um, That's actually a good point. Like. I know a lot of people that are in relationships with people like us that have mental illnesses. I know the te- the the temptation to try and fix us is very great, but the thing is, yeah. we don't need to be fixed. We just need someone to understand us, understand our struggles, and show us love and yeah. compassion. We don't need to be fixed, and right. like like. You can't fix us. Only God can fix us. Amen. Amen. Well, therapy and medication does help out. Yeah, uh, exactly. Well, God uses out. God uses therapy and medication to fix us. Amen. And it, it, it's still that stigma will always be there. You know? Yeah, exactly. I would recommend with all of my heart not trying to fix the quote-unquote bipolar, but mm-hmm. instead focusing on how can I love her and support her while she addresses the behaviors that makes her life more difficult? Exactly. If you try to go after bipolar, that's a moving target. Different people will diagnose you with different things and bipolar one. And, ah, well, the hypomania is a little bit low. So we're going to roll you off to bipolar two. The meds are just throwing spaghetti at the wall sometimes. And so there's a lot of toggling and a lot of fixing. And if you can get somebody who is truly bipolar one, uh, in bipolar two, too, but to tr- to take their meds, mm-hmm. you can see some extraordinary success. Yeah, There's and still going to be lows and still going to be highs, but it does make life much easier to live. You know what I mean? Right. And that's, I mean, that's the reason for what happened last year. She got off of her meds. She didn't like how they made her feel, mm-hmm. and you know, she got off of them, and then that happened. Okay. And you know, I've really tried to been on, be on her. You can't. Um, you can't, man. Taking- you can't be on her. You're not her dad. You're somebody who loves her. Yeah, that's a good point. Like he's not, he's not her dad. Like that's that's something. Like people that deal with pe- that date people with mental illnesses, they need to understand that that they're not, they're not that person's parent, they don't need to be like over us in a parental way. They just need, they, that like they're, they, they, they just need to be someone who loves us and cares for us. They don't need to be over us like a parental in a parental fashion. Right. Like it's definitely 
Like my thing is, did did he say that? Um, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Did he say that he's been with his fiance for five years? I think so. If that's the case, I'm like, first off, why are you wasting? Why are you why are you wasting time? Like five years? That's that's too long to be engaged. He probably loves, he probably loves you. But that's too long to be engaged to someone. Like honestly, like yeah, I, I remember when I met my wife, she flat out she didn't want to waste time. She flat out told me I have one after we started dating, I have one year to propose to her, and after that I have one year to marry her. Yeah, and I man. took that as a challenge. I married and I got engaged to her and married her in less than one year. Yeah, like man. that's like like you should like like why it, I don't understand why you're gonna be engaged to someone for five years, like like first off you guys first off he's wasting her time and she's wasting his time, like they could have moved on to someone else who will marry them in a lot faster fashion, like yeah. like it's ridiculous like that's one thing I don't like about like modern day relationships these days because people. Will be in a relationship with someone for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, and they're still just engaged, or they're still just they're still just dating, and it's yeah. like, no, like why, why are you wasting each other's time? Like if you should know whether or not you want to marry this person after the first four to six months of dating them. Um, if unfortunately, after, after, go ahead. Sorry. After the first four to six months of dating them, if you still are unsure about if you want to marry them, then you need to break up. Yeah, well, unfortunately, marriage has become old-fashioned for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't think marriage is old-fashioned. I just think people are afraid to commit. I, I think people are just afraid to commit. Mm. Yeah. And it's hard because you... The longer I, oh, that's a parenting analogy. I don't do that. The more you intervene uh -huh. and confirm to her that she is broken and damaged and unable to care for herself in any capacity, the more you come in and try to take over and quote unquote be on her about taking her stuff and doing the right, the more you do that, the more her ability to Get like with her doctor. No, this, on another note, there are studies out there because, like, there are studies out there that have shown that when a couple lives together before marriage, they're more they're like they're like ten times more likely to get a divorce after marriage, and and same thing. And then, like, when you're dealing, so like, not only are they living together, and they're after they're married, they're more likely to get a divorce. Now they're throwing bipolar in the mix, which bipolar and marriage has a high rate of divorce too. So not only are they living together, which causes a high rate of divorce, but they're also throwing mental illness in there that causes a high rate of divorce. This is a this is a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah. Like, well. like, like I'm not saying that I'm not saying that that for sure will get a divorce. But I'm saying it's not looking good. Like, first off, they're living together before marriage, which studies have shown when you cohabitate before marriage, you're more likely to get a divorce after marriage. And then, like, they're throwing bi bi bipolar in the mix. That makes that adds to the stress of like. So it's like, I mean, I hope these people. I don't know the. I don't know this couple, but I hope that they're Christians because if they're if they're not Christians, then their relationship is doomed to fail. Yeah, most likely. And to follow her doctor's plans and to build that resilience and that muscle, it just atrophies over time. The helplessness increases. Does that make sense? No, yeah, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, what, I'm what, not saying I'm not saying that Christians are for like being a Christian is for sure going to keep you married but if your if your marriage is focused solely on Christ 
and you, you stay focused on Christ, you have a higher chance of success uh, for a successful marriage than if you take your eyes off Christ and focus on your relationship and on yourself. But at the same time, like, man, I just, this this story really bothers me because, like, like all of this is just a recipe for disaster. First off, They've been engaged for five years. They're living together. They have bipolar disorder. This this is like a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Probably it's already inevitable. It's going to be doomed. <laughs> yeah. But often, not always, and again, I, I, I would want to talk to her and make sure she's got the right psychiatric care. Mm-hmm. Often the greatest gift you can give somebody who is struggling with mental health if they're with their mental health challenges, particularly in something like schizophrenia, something like bipolar, or one of the schizoaffective disorders, is that you be very, very well. Meaning you set the mark for, I am never going to miss a day of exercise. I'm going to get plugged into a spiritual community. I'm going to have my own friends. I do, think, I do think that's, that's some good advice. Yeah, I do think that's some good advice because I know like when it comes to that's my boss. life, when it comes to my wife, like I know when, like when she when she's taking care of her mental health, like my my wife will be the first one to tell you that when she's dealing with me, she has to take care of her own mental health sometimes on her own and like do something that she likes to do because my my mental health can sometimes be too taxing on her mental health. Yeah. So like I like that he said that that this guy needs to take care of himself first. Like, Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's good advice. I like that advice a lot that he said. Because like yeah. you set the bar. Once you take care of yourself and you set good standards for yourself and you abide by them, then the the person that's uh, suffering that you're trying to help out will only follow naturally. Yeah. Exactly. I'm going to eat as best as I can. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna do work that matters. I'm not going to owe a bunch of people money, so I'm not stressed all the time. And what you're doing is you're creating an environment of peace that often somebody with bipolar doesn't even understand. It's different air. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a purity of oxygen they've never breathed before. And instead of you bringing your chaos to an already chaotic environment and trying to demand clarity in that chaotic environment, it doesn't work. All right. See what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. And it feels like, let me put it this way, and this is going to sound harsh. Um, if you said, I'm going to love you every day, but I'm not going to call you and check up on you every day and see if you took your meds, I'm going to trust you. See, this and- is what, this is why I have a problem because sometimes when you're dealing like, like saying, I'm, I'm not going to check up on you every day. I'm just going to trust you to take your medication. That might work sometimes, but for those of us with mental illness, I know in my life personally, before I discovered the trick of like setting alarms in my phone to remind me to take my medication, I, I used to forget to take my medication and I could have, I could have really used someone calling me up to remind me to take my medication because there was times where I would either forget to take my medication or I would talk myself out of taking my medication. Right, yeah. Yeah, that's why I prefer the shots rather than pills. So I don't have to worry yeah, about all that. Uh, I prefer the pills. I don't like needles. Mm-hmm. And I know that you've been diagnosed with X or Y. In this relationship, You, we, we cannot lie to one another. Period. Mm-hmm. We have to tell the truth. Or I have to ask myself hard questions about being um, married to somebody who doesn't tell the truth. You cannot hit me. You cannot go off on three days, disappear for three days or five days and end up with somebody that we used to know and then just roll it up. Like That might be a function of your disorder. That might be a function of some of your manic behaviors. Um, that is not something I'm going to tolerate in this relationship. So if you want to be in this relationship with me, you're going to have to be extra um, direct with your psychiatrist. You're going to have to be extra intentional about taking your medication. You're going to have to be extra intentional about being honest with me. You see what I'm saying? I'm taking bipolar mm-hmm. off the table. I'm dealing with these behaviors. 
Because what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to end up her dad. Right. And that's exactly how I feel. Right. And that's not your job. Your job is to love her. Be her partner, not her father. Mm-hmm. And be her partner, not her father. Like that. Oh, uh, yeah, that's good advice. Like, I, I think like by focusing on the symptoms rather than the disorder, like I, I kind of think that in a way he's kind of minimizing the mental illness. Like, like she, he, he doesn't know. Like when you went, like I could tell he doesn't have bipolar disorder because if he if he had bipolar disorder, he would understand mania a little bit better. Because when I, when you're manic, like you're not really in control of yourself. Like so, right. if, if she gets manic, she could end up going around sleeping around, and she's not really aware that she's doing it. Yeah, yeah, to a certain degree, that's true. Yeah. And you can also find yourself after your dad passed away. Like I know when I've gone manic, when I the times when I've gone manic, I saw I was it was like I was on autopilot. Like I could see what I was doing, but it was almost like I had no control over my body. Like I I was on autopilot. Yeah. That's one way to describe it. Yeah suddenly the world feels a lot less a lot less in control it feels out of control it feels chaotic and mayhem and dude i'm going to tighten my grip on this one relationship that i got left mm. and what you end up doing right. is you tighten your grip so much you strangle the whole thing yeah i mean that's that's exactly how i feel like feel like what i'm doing right now All right, that's enough of that I don't see where his vice got to anything. Like, uh, how does that help him? What? And I don't see how his advice helped him out. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, I, I, I don't think his advice was really that great. Yeah. Like, he was just basically, like, telling him, oh, just focus on the symptoms. Don't focus on the disorder. You can't be her father. But, like, I just, uh, I don't really, like, like I, I feel like he wasn't getting at the heart of the issue. Yeah, because when you know, you have to get to the root of the problem when it comes to mental illness. The symptoms are, you know, not the the core of the problem. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So the last video that I have for tonight is we're revisiting our buddy Lecrae. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. Hey, it's us, Officer Lecrae. Y'all, have y'all ever heard of this lame? He called me a lame off the cuff. I know some people just hate our dreams and our visions, <laughs> even our prophecies. But we're not here to play. I believe you have the prophecy dream. Yeah. Hold up. I need to know why God gave him a prophetic dream about me. He belongs to Illuminati, period and simple. <laughs> he has a lot of women in bondage and he knows so much concerning sex trafficking. Man, I'm part of a sex trafficking ring. The fakest Christian hip hop artist in America. This is The Deep End with Lecrae. Y'all, this is going to be a good one today. Okay. So, people often wonder if the stuff said about me is legit. The stuff online. Some people don't wonder. Some people just know. I mean, I don't know how they know, but they know. Maybe the spirit told them. But there's a lot of things said about me online. And, um, you know, I mean, what, 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 if, what if they're true? What if the most craziest things you could ever imagine said about me are true? Is it time for me to just accept it, acknowledge it? I know some people out there are like, Lecrae, why don't you stop faking us out and just be honest? Stop pretending you really care about the stuff you don't care about and just be straight up. Quit dancing. Quit giving fake answers. Just say it so we can know 
exactly you are who we always thought you were. Let's see if they're right. Let's see if there's any validity to what they're saying. Because today I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell the truth. And if they're right, I'm not going to fight it. I'm just tired, y'all. Let's see. Blessings. Blessings to you Blessings. guys. Blessings. God bless you all. Yes. We have something that we want to share with you guys. Yes, Lecrae. You know what? We're doing this video because when I see it and watch it, he's being manipulative. But mm. I remember some years back, we did a prophetic dream about Lecrae. Yeah. I wish y'all yeah. would go back and watch yeah. it. Okay. Because God reveals <laughs> some deep secrets about Lecrae in the prophetic dream. I believe you had the prophetic dream. Yeah. Prophetic was deep. Dream. And even my mouth. What? Did you say prophetic dream or prophetic dream? She saw a prophetic dream. Oh, I thought she said prophety. Okay, I thought they were making a word prophety. <laughs> well, she has an accent, so but yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't because I, I thought she was making up words or something like. Oh no, she's not prophetic. Okay. Mouth was wowed. <laughs> Hold up! I need to know why God gave him a prophetic dream about me. I don't what who I don't know what. Okay, it's fine. I didn't know. That's crazy. I'm the subject of his prophetic dream. It's crazy. All right. I'm sorry. I know some people just hate our dreams and our visions, <laughs> even our prophecies, but we're not here to play. Like, again, like, it's so weird. Like, I always find it strange when I see these internet influencers talking about, oh, I'm a prophet. I'm an apostle. Like, it's like, do you even read the Bible? Like, yeah, right. Like I'm like no more we don't prophets. Need, Yeah, there's no more prophets. Like like it's ridiculous. And we're not here to be light. And uh, at okay. some point they will still come back and believe it. Yeah, they will. Because God is not playing. You know, I just give all honor to God. Yeah. I give all honor to God. Because even the dreams and visions that God give us, we place them. And when they come to pass, we'll be like, okay, my God, I cannot believe this, this is crazy, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? But um, let's listen to this. Um, I guess it was it was an interview of Lecrae talking, but he was, um, yeah, he was basically exposing himself. But yeah. I know you probably are taking it a different way, but I'm going to take it my way. Yeah. He mm. exposed himself. Let's yeah. mm. watch it. I wasn't even going to say nothing about this, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. <clears throat> Um, I've been to a couple Diddy parties. I've been to a couple Diddy parties. Do we need to slow that down? That doesn't mean anything. Now, I'm risking a lot. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything. Just because he's been to a couple of Diddy parties, they're trying, like, they're trying to make it seem like he, like it's some kind of horrible thing that he went to a couple. Everybody has a history. Everybody has a past. Yeah, like, doesn't mean he's involved with Diddy's little know, escapade. As soon as I say yeah. all, all the assumptions are gonna come in, and all the and if I don't say evil things were taking place, then I'm covering for him. And if I do say evil things were taking place, then I'm one of them ones like, yeah, Lecrae, expose it, expose it. You know what I'm saying? And hold I've on, been to lots of parties. I've been to Jamie Foxx. Okay, hold on, what? real quick. Now. You know, I know the allegations haven't been proven yet, but let's suppose Diddy did was guilty of these crimes. Do you think he tells every single person out there and like every single person who goes to his parties involved in this stuff? I'm pretty sure he keeps secrets like that for his closest compadres. And I don't think Lecrae is involved in bad boy records or anything like that. So this is this yeah. is guilty by association, which is a, a terrible way to treat people. Exactly. I don't like guilt by association myself. Like it's like just because you go to a party does not automatically mean you you're responsible for everything that happens at that party. Mm -hmm. Right. I've been with Snoop T I, like I've been to lots of places. Um the music is crazy. Here's what I'll say. Uh, when somebody is talking like this, you already know where they're going with it. Do you know where they're going with it? 
if you don't let them go there or do i don't know how do we know where they're going i don't know but it, i'm sorry let me let me let me see if they're on point let's see all right so this thing right here is an album i know it you may not know what an album is it's like a thing that plays records a record in order to listen to it crazy Mm -hmm. like you crazy all he is saying all day so maybe god who has been showing you how evil this kingdom this uh illuminati or this elite you know he he just trying to let you know or touch you know uh, belittle you in your thought and also in what god has anytime given. anytime i hear somebody bring up the illuminati i automatically think conspiracy nut because I don't know. The first time I heard about the Illuminati was when I read Dan Brown's book, The um, Angels and Demons. And that's the same guy that wrote The Da Vinci Code. And like, Dan Brown has no credibility whatsoever. Like, he's been thoroughly discredited. And like, I'm like, what? Well, like, the, the Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons, um, that's a fictional book that some atheists take as gospel for whatever reason, but yeah, um, I, I believe, I actually do believe they do exist. But um, the thing is though, that, that just because Lecrae is a musician doesn't mean he's involved with people like Diddy and Jay-Z and stuff like that. Just because he goes to a party or two doesn't mean he's affiliated with Freemasons or anything like that. So just because you can't, you can't just take everybody single uh, that's, involved in the music industry you know he seems like he's a legitimate christian to me so yeah exactly. why would i join a secret society like the freemasons or illuminati for yeah exactly to you that's exactly what he's trying to make some people because there's a lot of gullible members out here baby christians that can hear this and run with it right away mm -hmm. you know they know how to stop their words they are very intelligent in their words like uh lovey java a lot of them tdjs they know how ben to ben Hinn, they know how Rep to use their words carefully but at mm. the same time deceiving i think you can say the same thing about your followers bro yeah i know right exactly he knows how to use his words deceitfully yeah like, like he's a he prophet can... and his dreams are significant i don't think they mm. are yeah exactly with it now he want to just tell people more lies that's all he doing Wait. Huh? there are people who will test you there are people who will see how far your limits are and if you willing to take a step then they'll take two i i in my personal experience never saw anything where someone was like you can't move any further unless you do x y or z but what i did see was if you do do x y or z well keep coming because you're you know and that's how we all are it's psalm one right um he said you hear that this is the this is the the, the worst thing that a lot of preachers do mm -hmm. they know the truth Mm -hmm. They know that they're manipulating you. Mm -hmm. They know that they're deceiving you. Mm -hmm. But they will have to use some indirect ways to keep on trapping you, making you believe that, uh, oh, there is nothing like evil out here. There is nothing like somebody selling their souls to the devil. Oh, this is all just wrapped up. This, this, this is, all, words this is all just messing up. Well, he's basically trying to say he's trying to compare lecrae to false teachers that use that use certain that use biblical language to make themselves seem more appealing right. he's trying to say lecrae do, is doing that i don't know about that yeah wait I, I so i actually here's the crazy part i actually agree with him on a lot of this that's the crazy part i don't agree with him about me <laughs> But I do agree that oftentimes people whose motive is to manipulate you is to use the truth in order to tell you a bigger lie. I mean, that's what Satan does. You know, he says, did God really say? He didn't say. Like, Satan will use truth in order to convince you of a greater lie. 
I think in this context, now what I feel like is happening here is this this guy already got it out bad for me. So it, it doesn't really matter what I say. It's like, I'm convinced you are wrong. So if I say, hey man, I just think God is good. Don't you try to tell me God is good. You manipulator, I see what you're doing. What 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 am I doing? That's that's exactly what he's doing. Like no matter like the guy already made up his mind that Lecrae is a false teacher. So no matter what Lecrae says, he's gonna automatically say he's just using that language to deceive you. Yeah. Like I like basically this guy, like like a lot of false teachers, they'll they'll say things to gaslight you into thinking you're in the wrong. Yeah. No kidding. <sighs> I'm telling you God is good. I see you. God is good two times. That's Illuminati tactics. I don't listen. What I did here now, being honest, I feel like I probably did too much telling people that I went to Diddy's party. I really, what I was trying to do was like throw myself out there and be like, hey, I'm human. First of all, the party was like eight years ago. So I ain't been since, this is eight years ago. Second of all, it wasn't one of those parties, okay? Like this is one of the ones open to the public, like media's there, like everybody's there. So it yeah. wasn't like, oh, this is some secret Illuminati event, but I can see what? how may take. The, there was media cameras there and there was other people there and Lecrae was just a guest. It wasn't some secretive, place in a lodge underground or something like that you know yeah exactly it was one of the public parties yeah take it that if you don't know much about the context i mean i don't god gave you a prophecy about me i don't listen i don't know what he said my life's kind of boring um at this juncture i go to the studio i record podcasts i read my bible i do shows and i go home to my family it's not really that i mean there's no sacrificing animals and drinking blood in order to win a Grammy. None of that stuff is happening. I mean, it never has, but that's just kind of crazy, like how they're just sure. And then they play clips from my own podcast. I'm the one that said it, like I told you. And then I said, hey, I've never seen anything crazy take place, but I have seen people say, hey, if you want to do drugs, you know, they'll approach you with it. If you about this drug life, then come on. And if you go, then that opens the door for more things and then more things. I never took the first step. So I never got privy to what comes after that. I just, you know, it again, I should have just kept it to myself. It didn't, it wasn't, I don't think it was helpful for me to even tell people that it was eight years ago, different time period in my life, a lot of different stuff going on. The problem with prophecies the problem with like the rhema is you can't argue against it because like only he has access to what God told him. I can't use the scripture against the. That's true. Like that's that's the thing about like these modern day quote unquote prophets is you like it's their prophecies are so subjective that like you don't really know exactly what that what is being shared with them and like how you can't really combat it. Like you yeah. could, you could, you could tell them what the word of God says, but these modern day prophets will act like, oh well, I have a prophecy straight from God Himself, and that so that trumps what your scripture says, and so that's that that's ridiculous. the problem with these modern day prophets. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Anybody would think their prophecy trumps the word of God. Exactly. Word. If God said you are supposed to marry me, what am I supposed to do? How do I argue? God said you're my wife. Well, how do I argue with that? What am I supposed to say? God didn't tell me. I got can't. Well, no, according to Romans, it's like, no, you can't argue with God. He said it in my dream. You gotta be true. And it's just like, you know, in the biblical times, if that prophecy didn't come forward, you got stoned. Yeah. So that's true. Not that's why I think like if we lived in biblical times, or if we brought back the biblical rule that prophets should be stoned if they give a false prophecy. Yeah, I bet you you'll start seeing a lot different. Yeah, you'll see a lot less people coming out trying to speak for God because no more Barry Scarborough, no more Dr. Barry Ah. Uh. Yeah, exactly. I just quick to throw out prophecies because you would die for false prophecies. So I 
I don't know. Like, I can't. How do you argue with somebody who had a dream about me? And how do you argue with somebody who's just already bent on misunderstanding me from the get go? But I do agree. Like, there's a lot of pastors out there. He named some names that I was like, I've seen the manipulative tactics of some of those folks. I would not consider myself those folks. I don't stand to gain anything by, like, I don't take tithes and offerings. <laughs> and it really wouldn't be helpful for me to, like, if I'm trying to manipulate people out of their money, I, I wouldn't be helpful for me to say things that are counterintuitive to them wanting to support me. Like people are not excited about me saying I went to a Diddy party. Uh, that kind of makes you lose support, not gain it. But I was just trying to be transparent. I was trying to be open. I was trying to welcome people in. So I'm sorry. I won't do it no more. I'll just be quiet. Being vulnerable gets me in trouble. Me shut up. <sighs> Praise Master Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. God, God is, is a, a good, good God. God. God is awesome God, y'all. Yes, he is. But on a serious note, yes. when God begin to speak, when God begin to expose, we always listen and pay attention for what God is saying. Remember in the scripture, it said, when I say it, write them down. Mm -hmm. You know what God is saying. Yes. And uh, a lot of times, people want to know God's voice, hear God's voice. It's very important so you can also hear God for yourself. My thing is, like, I always, like, when it comes to, like, charismatics and continuationists, I want to ask them, like, do they believe that the like, when they hear from God, would that would the words would, when they hear from God will their revelation can that revelation contradict scripture and if they say no then my next question is the why do you need the revelation and you can just read the scriptures who you knows it's extra biblical <laughs> yeah you don't if you, if you, if you acknowledge that God will not reveal any new revelation to you because the canon is closed, then you don't need God's revelation. You just need the, what the Holy Scriptures say. Right, exactly. Yeah. Amen, amen. And um, obviously, you see the title. Actually, one of these days, we should do a, we should do, a, maybe we should talk about this like next week about how bad theology affects mental health. Okay. Yeah. Cray, if you don't know Lecrae, he is a gospel rapper. Um, to me, this video is a long time coming. We should have did this video a long time ago, uh, but I'm glad we waited because God began to share a prophecy, a word concerning Lecrae. Mm. But as for me, I always wanted to warn people not to listen to him. He's not of God. I personally know this is because I have a close, real close family member who went to college with him in UNT. And I know um, how he started and the way he started was not of God. Uh, so she knows a really close friend, friend or family member that knew Lecrae and knew how he st So because he didn't start off as a Christian, now you're saying he's not of God. Like, how many of us can actually say we started our life as a Christian? I know I can't. Say, I know I can't say that. Like, I didn't start my life as a Christian. I was raised. The, I was raised by a, born again. I was raised by a Buddhist mother. Like, yeah. so well, you I, know, it's, it's called born again for a reason. You don't start out as a Christian when you're a baby. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but the Lord began to share some things to my husband and uh we have to put this video out here uh, to. to expose the, the enemy darkness. to expose the dark kingdom so let me he belongs to illuminati period and simple he belongs to El illuminati and he has a lot of women in bonding hold up wait a minute something ain't right what i had was he, uh, he he's hospitalizing a lot of women. In other means, he has a lot of women in bondage, and he knows so much concerning sex trafficking. Yeah. Very easy and simple. He knows uh, about this very well, and he is 
using, manipulating a lot of Christians that believe in what he is doing or what he's uh, ministering out there, but it's not of God. It's very highly, highly deceiving and demonic, and a lot of people are being... Uh, that's a he's accusing him of being a sex trafficker. Do I hear that correctly? He has no evidence whatsoever. That's a that's serious a, accusation. That's slanderous. That's slanderous. Like if Lecrae really wanted to, he could sue him for that. No. That's slanderous and that's defamation. Held off with that uh, platform of uh, this guy and also he 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 goes around with major ministers these major ministers uh, like uh, mega churches and they know each other and there is a great connection between him and uh, uh, TD Jakes. Jakes they know each other and I was like are they like family member or friends or whatsoever um, but the only thing that I heard was that you no, know, each of them very close. Yo, man, yo, I got, I gotta stop it. I gotta, I gotta stop it, cause I'm, I don't even. What? Hold up. There's so much to talk about. I don't even. Lord, help me. Help me, God. <laughs> okay, okay. Where? Wait a minute. First of all, first of all. I mean, I if you if you feel like I'm part of Illuminati, okay, that's one thing. But now I'm part of a whole trafficking ring. As <laughs> we getting out of control. Like, let's talk first. First of all, you knew someone who went to school with me and figured out how I started was not of God. I didn't start in school. <laughs> I was in school. <laughs> My career wasn't started. I graduated and got a job. <laughs> <laughs> my career in school your friend if she knew me she probably knew a heathen <laughs> if i'm being honest i can tell you that for sure she probably knew a heathen somebody who just got saved or uh, maybe flip-flopped a little bit but yeah my career didn't didn't start when i was in college so i don't know where she got her information from and i actually live in atlanta with about 40 people <laughs> who I went to school with, we all call it the Texas. We just came to Texas from at Texas to Atlanta together to do ministry. I'm pretty sure, I mean, I guess we all part of this Illuminati ring. It's so kind of maybe. ridiculous that she would say that, like, like I think, how many of us can say, I, I appreciate Lecrae's honesty here that saying that, that her friend probably knew a heathen. Like, like it's it shows like all of us have a history. Like I bet you, you can go back in my life like twenty years ago, and the person that you'll see twenty years ago will not be the same person that I am today. Yep, same here. Yeah, like maybe that's what it is. Now, the Illuminati. I just want to know what the. This is the worst part because if I say I want, I really. If I say I don't believe in it or I want to know what it is because I never heard of it, then everyone just says, see, you're covering for it. So it's no room for me. Either I say that's yes. true. Like, like people that are conspiracy theory minded, when they accuse you of being a part of the Illuminati, there's really nothing you can say to convince them otherwise. Because if you say you're not of the Illuminati, then they say, oh, you're just denying it. Or if you say, can you explain to me what the Illuminati is? Or like, then they say, oh, you're just covering for that. Or if you say, I don't believe that the Illuminati exists, then they say, oh, you're just covering for the Illuminati. So really, these conspiracy theory people, they put, they put you, when they, when they accuse you of being a part of the Illuminati, they put you in a no-win situation. Well... I don't see any evidence of him even being in the club. I mean, he's a Christian. I don't see him like flashing any demonic signs or covering up his eye or anything like that. So yeah. I don't know where he get these baseless claims from. Like not every single famous person that exists that's in the music industry, especially if they're claiming to be a Christian. I mean, that's one that's 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 a good sign right there. These Illuminati 
Luciferian people are of the devil. They are not yeah. Christians. Okay, they don't like Jesus Christ. Okay, it kind of so, reminds me. It kind of reminds me of in the Puritans, the Puritans Salem witch trials. They had a set up to where if they said you were a witch, you were you were a witch. If you denied that you were a witch, then you were a witch. So really, with the seven witch trials, they set these women up in a no-win situation. And that's what these conspiracy theory people are doing to people like Lecrae, setting them up in a no-win situation. Yeah, I don't I don't see any evidence of him being in any secret society or anything. Yeah. So I don't see any. I just don't. You're right. Or I say, no, I'm not. But it doesn't matter because if I say I'm not, you're going to say you're liar. You're covering because God gave you a dream. He gave you a prophetic dream. He gave you a prophetic dream, which is so crazy that I, I think you need help. I think you off the meds. <laughs> I think you need to get yourself checked. Uh, you, he gave you a prophetic dream. I'm almost scared to show this video because some of the people I grew up from the east side skyline, Pyru Bloods may be looking for you for saying I'm a part of this trafficking ring. They may want to pull up on you like, hey, homie, hey, what's that you said about my cousin, bro? Like, I, like I'm, I'm. This is bad, y'all. Like, this is so bad. It's bad. Like, oh my gosh. Here's the other crazy part. I ain't never met TD Jakes. I like to meet him. I, I ain't never met the man. I've been to his church before. I ain't never shook his hand. I ain't never met the bishop. So I don't, we, we can't be good friends. I ain't never met him. He ain't called me, he ain't text me. I ain't never met him. I'm actually kind of flattered that he think I'm so popping that I belong in the Illuminati. Like apparently in his mind, I'm so popping. I hang out with Jake's and I'm in Illuminati. I be at carpool, bro. <laughs> I be at carpool picking up my son. <laughs> I don't think TDJ's probably got a helicopter to pick up his kids from carpool. I am not in that tax bracket. I, me and Jake's ain't in the same. Now I got some awards. I'm doing fine. God has blessed me, but I live in a neighborhood that ain't even gated. I shouldn't have said that. I don't want nobody pulling up on me. I, I don't, don't pull up on me. I got, I got artillery. So be careful. All right. This is deep. Like, this is deep, man. Like, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. This is why if he was my neighbor, he came to my small group, he would just come to my small group and be like, this is a lie. If he saw me lead somebody to Christ, he'd be like, I don't know how you perform this magic. Honestly, <laughs> I get it, Jesus. I get how you was performing miracles and they said you did it by the works of demons. I get it, because that's what this is. This man, this is crazy. This is crazy. I was going to get on his head and I was going to show him another side of me, but I ain't going to do that. Because you know what? I'm going to love this. As a matter of fact, Henry and Monica... Lord, we pray for them. We pray, God, that you... Uh, just... that's, an, that's enough of that. What do you think about that? Well, the thing is, though, I think uh, being a, a paranoid schizophrenic, being a, and a Christian, too, that, that believes in the premillennial position of revelation, kind of being a conspiracy theorist kind of comes with the territory. But I certainly don't idolize this stuff. I don't let it consume me with fear or anything. I'm, I'm a little bit interested in it and stuff, but you know what? Ultimately, God is in control, and I know that. So no matter who's who's running the planet or whatever you know they say is, is happening, if they're lizard people or whatever, it doesn't matter because God is in ultimate control, and, I ha and he has my back because I'm saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I found him 20 years ago when I was 20 years old, and I'm 40 now, and, and it's it's been a hell of a journey. Uh, it's been a, quite the journey ever since, but... You know, yes. um, you know, so it doesn't matter what what the elitists do. You know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, the Illuminati may 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 look like if the Illuminati is real, they may look like they're in control, but they the only power they have is the power that God allows them to have. But God yeah. is the one who's ultimately in control of everything that happens in this universe. Yeah. So we don't have to we don't have to be afraid of the Illuminati or the Rockefellers or the Rothschilds or any of them. Like they're like they're 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 ultimately in the end every knee will bow before Jesus Christ and say Jesus is Lord. Amen. Yeah. So yeah, I know. 
like, like, yeah, like, say we came, we became very big, and I accidentally did this somehow, like barely did it. You know, I would get uh, videos exposing me. Joseph McDermott is in the Illuminati. You know, it's like just yeah. because I accidentally almost did that. You know. Yeah, then they're gonna say that. Then they're gonna say I'm in the. Then they're gonna say I'm in the Illuminati just by associating with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like it's ridiculous. You know, I, I, I love Jesus Christ. I am not in any. I'm I'm a member of a church that's that all their teachings are out in the open in public. So I I'm not a mem any member of any of anything like that. I never would want to be. I love the Lord and I love my brotherhood in Christ. And that's better than yeah. any secret society ever could offer me. Amen to that, brother. So yeah. is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I guess I'm good. All right. Well, I want to thank you for joining this stream. I want to let everybody thank everybody for the, for the for viewing this live stream and those who are going to watch the playback to this stream. Thank you. Stay tuned next week on next Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll have our next episode, and that that next week we'll talk about how bad theology affects mental health. Because like right. I have a whole lot to say about that. But yeah, like, um, yeah, and, and please leave a like to this video. Share this video with um, someone that you feel like needs to hear what we're talking about. Like especially like the beginning of the video when we were talking about suicide. I think that so people really need to hear what we have to say there. But like, and then um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed already. And if you've been blessed by the Christ Center Mental Health Ministry, please consider supporting the ministry either Patreon, Venmo, or Cash App. If you support the ministry through Patreon for five dollars or more, or if you give a one-time donation through Venmo or Cash App for ten dollars or more, I'll send you a few copies of my books as a total token of my gratification. I right, thank you very much, everyone. God bless you, and have a good night, and stay strong with the Lord. All right, bye. Amen. God bless. God bless.